वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स इन अवर टू डे इज ऑनलाइन इंग्लिश क्लास टू डे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अ लेसन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास टेंथ विच इज़ द सिक्स चैप्टर ऑफ योर सप्लीमेंट्री बुक द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज द मेकिंग ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू द चैप्टर द स्टोरी द मेकिंग ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट इज अबाउट द ग्रेट साइंटिस्ट रिचर्ड एच इब्राइट ही हैड अ हैबिट ऑफ कलेक्टिंग बटरफ्लाइज rocks fossils and coins since he was a kid he started scientific research on the study of butterflies his curiosity and a will to win for the right reason made him successful richard e bright has received the serial scholar award and skiering pluck award for biochemistry and molecular biology so let us see how many characters are in this story there are five main characters in this chapter first of all richard h ibright he is a brilliant scientist he is noted for his work on cell and reading of dna second character is richard's mother she is an encouraging mother who supported richard in every way third character is dr frederick a urukhart he is a prominent scientist he did his research on monarch butterflies he provided valuable guidance to richard for his project next character is richard a wehrer he is richard's social studies teacher he helped richard to become a good debater and a public speaker next character is james r wong He is a fellow scholar who worked with Richard on a project. So let us begin the chapter. At the age of 22, a former scout of the year excited the scientific world with a new theory on how cells work. Richard H. Ibright and his college roommate explained this theory in an article in the proceedings of the national academy of science it was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students in sports that would be like making the big league at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first time at bat for richard ibright it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields and it is it all started with butterflies so let us see the explanation of this paragraph the article of richard h ibright and his friend was published in scientific journal proceeding of the national academy of science he was only 22 years old at that time it was the first time that the research work of college student was published it was a rare honor for richard it was his first achievement in the field of science and it started with butterflies and only an only child a bright grew up north of reading pennsylvania there wasn't much i could do there he said I certainly couldn't play football or baseball with a team of one but there was one thing I could do collect things so he did and did he ever beginning in kindergarten a bright collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activities he also collected rocks fossils and coins he became an eager astronomer to sometime star gazing all night so richard was the only child of his parent they lived in pennsylvania in usa as there was no scope for playing football or baseball for him so he developed the habit of collecting things such as rocks fossils coins he also took interest in science of astronomy and also loved 
to gaze at the stars all night let us see the next passage from the first he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind he also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning she took him on trips bought him telescopes microscopes cameras mounting materials and other equipment and helped him in many other ways i was his only companion until he started school his mother said after that i would bring home friends for him but at night we just did things together richi was my whole life after his father's father died when richi was in third grade she and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table if he didn't have things to do i found work for him not physical work but learning things his mother said he liked it he wanted to learn so let's see the explanation of these paragraphs Richard lost his father when he was in third grade. So his mother was his only companion. His mother encouraged his interest in learning. She took him on trips and bought him telescopes, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials and other equipment. She also supported him in his hobbies. She also invited his friends to play with him. She helped him in learning at young age. and learn he did he earned top grades in school on every day things he was just like every other kid his mother said by the time he was in second grade a bright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown see following box so here richard was deeply interested in butterflies since his early childhood when he was in second grade he had collected collected 25 species of butterflies found around him see this box there are the different species of the butterflies that he collected at his early age that probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting he said but then my mother got me a children's book called the travels of monarch 10 that book which told how monarch butterflies migrate to central america opened the world of science to the eager young collector here after collecting these butterflies the interest of a bright in butterflies ended but his mother gave him the book the travel of monarch 10 this book it described about the migrating pattern of monarch butterfly to central america it opened up a new world of science for richard let's see the next passages at the end of the book readers were invited to help study butterfly migration they were asked to tag butterflies for research by dr frederick A. Urquhart of the University of Toronto, Canada. A bride's mother wrote to Dr. Urquhart, and soon a bride was attaching light adhesive tag to the wings of monarchs. Anyone who found a tagged butterfly was asked to send the tag to Dr. Urquhart. The butterfly collecting season around Reading last six week in late summer. See the paragraph below. if you are going to chase them one by one you won't catch very many so the next step for a bright was to raise a flock of butterflies he would catch a female monarch take her eggs and raise them in his basement through their life cycle from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly then he would tag the butterflies wings and let them go For several years his basement was home of thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. So 
at the end of the book richard found an invitation for studying the migration of butterflies readers were told to tag butterflies for research by dr frederick a urquhart of university of toronto canada so richard started tagging monarch butterflies the butterfly collecting season in his area where he lives he lives in reading okay reading is a place so the collecting season in his area lasted for 6 weeks in late summer it was difficult to chase them one by one so richard took a decision to raise a stock of butterflies he would catch a female monarch and take her eggs he studied their development from eggs to caterpillar to pupa and to adult butterfly then he would tag their wings and free them he raised thousands of butterflies in his basement of his home this is a chart the number of kinds of butterflies he collected in 6 weeks look grosmer wing he collected 8 butterflies wood nymphs and stars two butterflies brush footed 10 white and sulfurs he collected 3 monarch 1 and snout 1 these are the kinds of butterflies these are the species eventually i began to lose interest in tagging butterflies it is tedious and there is not much feedback a bright set in all the time i did it he loved only two butterflies i had tagged were recaptured and they were not more than 75 miles from where i lived now a bright says soon he started losing interest in butterflies because it was a tedious work and he captured only two tagged butterflies they were not far than 75 miles from his living place let us see the next paragraph then in the 7th grade he got a hint of what real science is when he entered a country science fair and lost it was really a sad feeling to sit there and not get anything while everybody else had won something a bright said his entry was slides of frog tissues which he showed under a microscope he realized the winners had tried to do real experiments not simply make a neat display already the competitive spirit that drives richard a bright was appearing i knew that for the next years where i would have to do a real experiment he said the subject i knew most about was the insect work i would been doing in the past several years so here richard was in 7th grade when he realized what true science is he displayed his slides of frogs at a at the county science fair but did not win any award he realized the winners in the fair had tried to do real experiments soon he achieved his first success before he decided that the next year he would also do a real experiment so he wrote to dr urquhart for ideas and back came a stock of suggestions for experiments those kept a bright busy all through high school and led to prize projects in country county and international science fair so for his next project he wrote to dr urquhart as you know he is a scientist he wrote a letter to urquhart for ideas and received many suggestions soon richard achieved his first success for his 8th grade project a bright tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years a bright thought the disease might be carried by a beetle 
he tried raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles i didn't get any real result he said but i went ahead and showed that i had tried the experiment this time i won okay when a bright was in 8th grade his 8th grade project he had tried to find the cause of viral disease that kills monarch butterflies monarch caterpillars richard thought that the disease might be carried by beetles he tried raising caterpillars in presence of beetles but he failed however he won a prize in the county fair let's see the next stanza the next year his science fair project was testing the theory that viceroy butterflies copy monarchs this was his project for next year when he was in Ninth standard, the theory was the viceroy looks like monarchs because monarchs don't taste good to birds. Viceroys, on the other hand, do taste good to birds. So the more they look like monarchs, the less likely they are to become a bird's dinner. A bride's project was to see whether, in fact, birds would eat monarchs. he found that a starling would not eat ordinary bird food it would eat all the monarchs it could get a bright said later research by other people showed that viceroys probably do copy the monarch this project was placed first in the geology division and third overall in the county science fair so look at the picture there are two butterflies first one is monarch butterfly and the second is viceroy so for the next year science fair a bright's project was testing the theory that viceroy butterfly copy monarch means monarch uh, viceroy butterfly used to copy monarch butterfly yes the theory was that viceroy butterfly do so to protect themselves from the birds as birds don't like to eat monarchs while they like to eat viceroys means the taste of the both butterflies is different for birds he also found that a bird starling would only eat monarch butterflies and not ordinary bird food this project was placed first in geology division and third in overall county science fair In his second year in high school, Richard Ebright began the research that led to his discovery of an unknown insect hormone. Indirectly, it also led to his new theory on the life of cells. The question he tried to answer was simple: What is the purpose of the twelve tiny gold spots on a monarch pupa? So, in the in his second year of high school. Richard discovered an unknown hormone which also lead to his new theory on the life of cell. By this project his purpose was to know the reason behind the 12 tiny gold spot on monarch pupa. Everyone assumed the spots were just ornamental. A bright said, but Dr. Urukhart didn't believe it. to find the answer a bright and another excellent science student first had to build a device that showed that the spots were producing a hormone necessary for the butterfly's full development this project won a bright first place in the county fair and entry into the international science and engineering fair there he won third place for geology he also got a chance to work during the summer at the entomology laboratory of the walter reed army institute of research so here richard along with another science student built a device which showed that the spots were producing a hormone which is necessary for the growth of butterflies and this project won Richard first place in county science fair he also got entry into the international science and engineering fair there he won third place for 
zoology and also got a chance to work at the entomology laboratory of Walter Reed Army Institute of Research during summer. As a high school junior, Richard Ebright continued his advanced experiments on the monarch pupa. That year, his project won first place at the International Science Fair and gave him another chance to work in the army laboratory during the summer. In his senior year, he went a step further. He grew cells from a monarch's wing in a culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots. That project won first place for zoology at the International Fair. He spent the summer after graduation doing further work at the Army Laboratory and at the laboratory of the US Department of Agriculture. When Richard was in high school, he continued his advanced experiment on the monarch pupa and this year he won first place in international science fair and gave him another chance to work in army laboratory during the summer. So uh, in the senior year he went a step further. He grew cells from monarch wing in the culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales. Only if when they were fed the hormone from the gold spots. And this project, project won first place for geology at the International Fair and he spent the summer after graduation doing further work at the Army Laboratory and at the Laboratory of US Department of Agriculture. The following summer after his freshman year at Harvard University, a bright went back to the laboratory of the Department of Agriculture and did more work on the hormone from the gold spots. Using the laboratory sophisticated instruments, he was able to identify the hormone's chemical structure. A year and a half later, during his junior year, a bright got the idea for his new theory about cell life. It came when he was looking at x-ray photos of the chemical structure of a hormone. When he saw those photos, a bride didn't shout, Urika, or even I have got it, but he believed that along with his findings about insect hormones, the photos gave him the answer to one of biology's puzzles. How the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. DNA is the substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity. It determines the form and functions of the cell. Thus, DNA is the blueprint of life. Here, Richard joined Harvard University after summer. In his junior year, he got the idea of his new theory about cell life while looking at the X-ray photos of chemical structure of a hormone. He believed that his study could tell how the cell can read the blueprint of DNA. It is the substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity. Ebright and his college roommate James R. Rung worked all that night drawing pictures and constructing plastic models of molecules to show how it could happen. Together, they later wrote the paper that explained the theory. So, Richard and his college roommate, James R. Wong, worked all night constructing the plastic models of molecules. Later, they together wrote a paper explained this theory which was published in a paper first time. Surprising no one who knew him, Richard A. Bright graduated from Harvard with highest honors, second in his class of 1510 students. A. Bright went on to become a graduate student researcher at Harvard Medical School. There he began doing experiment to test his theory. So, Richard graduated with second position 
in the class of 1510 students he became a graduate student researcher he started experimenting to prove his new theory if the theory proves correct it will be a big step towards understanding the process of life it might also lead to new ideas for preventing some type of cancer and other diseases all of this is possible because of a bright scientific curiosity his high school research into the purpose of the spots on a monarch pupa eventually led him to his theory about cell life so when a bright started experiment to prove his theory his theory may create new ways to prevent some type of cancer and other diseases and it was all possible due to his high school research into the monarch pupa uh, the spots on the monarch monarch pupa richard a bright has been interested in science since he first began collecting butterflies but not so deeply that he hasn't time for other interest a bright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good canoeist and all around outdoor person he is also an expert photographer particularly of nature and science exhibits richard was not just a scientist he was an all rounder he was a champion debater and a public speaker he was also a good canoeist who used to paddle canoe and an outdoor person he was also a great photographer in high school richard ibright was a straight a student because learning was easy he turned a lot of his energy toward the debating and model united nations club he also find someone to admire richard a vihrer his social studies teacher and advisor to both clubs mr vihrer was the perfect person for me then he opened my mind to new ideas ibright said in his high school he was a part of the debating and the model united nations club there he found richard a vihrer his social studies professor whom he admired a lot mr vihrer a bright teacher praised richard for his hard work he also praised richard healthy competitive with was just for the sake of doing his best richard would always give the extra effort mr vihrer said what pleased me was here was this person who put in 3 or 4 hours at night doing debate research beside doing all his research with butterflies and his other interest so mr vihrer praised richard for his hard work he said that he used to give 4 or 5 hours at night for debate research beside doing his research with butterflies and other interest he also says that richard was competitive mr vihrer continued but not in a bad sense he explained richard was interested in winning for winning sake or winning to get a prize rather he was winning because he wanted to do the best job he could for the right reason he wants to be the best and that is one of the ingredients in the making of a scientist start with a first rare mind add curiosity and mix in the will to win for the right reason a bright has three qualities from the time the book the travels of monarch then opened the world of science to him richard a bright has never lost his scientific curiosity in these stanzas mr ibright uh, sorry mr vihrer continued praising richards he says 
Richard had all the qualities that made him a true scientist. He had a first rare mind. curiosity and a will to win for the right reason and that made him the scientist the book the travel of monarch 10 opened the world of science for ibright and ibright has never lost his scientific curiosity and in the end he became a scientist so that's all for the day students I hope you will get the inspiration from Richard Ibright